Well, good morning. good morning. Happy Labor Day weekend. Would you stand as we begin to praise the Lord this morning and give thanks for all that he's done and all that he will do. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. morning you may be seated uh oh hang on just a second we're gonna give a shout out amen with some feedback how you doing this morning it is good to see you I'm glad to be back home we're glad to be with you we were in Tennessee last week had a wonderful time with a another church that loves the Lord and, and uh, had the opportunity to be there and it was just it was great but it's not like being here and being home so we love you we thank God for you today we have a special way to start out the service today. I can't think of a better song that we just sing, To God Be the Glory, Great Things He Has Done. So how many of you just, football just started. Um, how many of you just watched football yesterday? All right, anybody? Come on now, y'all not that spiritual. <laughs> Nobody, okay, so you watch football. Okay, so on the count of three, 
I want you to do whatever you know to do, okay? Praise the Lord, hallelujah, whatever. If we can scream at the TV, how many of you screamed at the TV? <laughs> All right, just a few. Anybody throw anything at the TV? Yeah, so if your team's... Li- yeah, Robbie, that's why we have prayer time at the beginning of every service, amen? But uh, I want us in just a second just to say, hey, to God be the glory, great things he's done, Amen. So you get ready. You ready? You ready? I'm, now look, if y'all just dud out on me, it's going to look really bad. And it's going to sound really bad for those watching online. And by the way, for those of you watching online today, welcome to North Star Family Church. Those of you here today who are our first time guests, welcome. I know we have some that have come today to witness this baptism and be a part and support of this. To God be the glory of great things he's done. What happens when God brings someone from death? to life. And they get to symbolize it walking through the waters of baptism. How about this baptistry this morning? Isn't that awesome? Amen. Yep. Doesn't have any jets in it. I know it looks like a jacuzzi. <laughs> Brent needed to soak his leg this morning, but he, it's not hot and it's not bubbling, so he's out of luck. And, uh, but we are. We're grateful for Brother Jojo at the association office that allowed us to borrow this, and we get to keep it all of September. So, we won't keep the water all of September because there'll be a little film on top of it by the end. But I tell you what we are going to do. We're going to ask God to lay on people's heart who need to be baptized. Amen. Who have gotten saved here recently. We have others who have not followed through and been obedient. I'll never forget when I first got saved. I'll never forget Dr. Merritt looked at me and said, Hey, now you've got to let people know got to let people know. I said, I'll let people know. Next day, it was a Sunday, and I couldn't wait to walk through those waters of baptism to let people know that Jesus saved me. Amen? Amen. Hey, let's get back to the, by the way, let's let it rip, okay? As my mama said, let it rip, potato chip. And uh, so get ready, okay, on the count of three. Whatever you want to do, you, now look, I've just got to preface it. Don't make this a dud, so Stan, you got to participate. Okay, say something. Jace, hit him something. Say so he goes, ooh, ah, or something. All right, ready? On the count of three. Your favorite word. You build it up just one, two, three. Praise the Lord. Woo! Oh, we got some Baptocostal in here. Praise the Lord. Y'all have been on the loose, I can tell. And, uh, hey, this thing is kind of in my way. I'm going to put that in my back in just about three seconds. Is that stand? Thank you, honey. She might put it on my head in about two. We're going to get ready in just a moment, but why don't you stand up, wave at someone, and then tell them you're glad to see them today, and then we're going to baptize right after this. may be seated. You can get, hang on just a second. Hey, Barry, yeah. you can pull me down just a second. I think it may be me that's feeding back just a little. Just pull me down just a little bit. That's good. Thank you, sir. All right, Jace, we are so thankful. Mom, can you help Jace get in? There we go. walk around this side. Come on in. It's all right. We will want you to never forget. (laughs) So today, this is so special because this is Poppy. He has a real name. His name's Stan Frederick. And this is his grandson. And um, I can't think of a, a better way today to do this. So Stan, you have the opportunity to baptize grandson today. So Poppy, let's get him ready. Why don't you take your hand and put it on your nose. Get ready, okay? All right. Poppy, you 
baptize Jace, our new little brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I believe there are others who God's going to use this opportunity. So you continue to pray for that. Starla, you continue to lead us. Yes, for those of you that are visiting today, if you don't mind, in the seat pocket in front of you is a connect card. We'd love for you to fill that out just so we know who you are. We know you're here maybe because of a special time with the Brethrick family. And, uh, but if you could fill that out, we also have a gift for you. We have a jar of apple butter, and uh, we want you to take that. It's out in the foyer as you leave. And if you'll just place the Connect card in the basket right back there. It's our offering basket and a prayer basket and all those good things. You place that Connect card in there. Well, you know, there's so many things that we experience throughout the week that could cause us to have fear. You know, some people right now are living in great fear. And, um, but this next song tells us who, who do we have to fear when the Lord is on our side, when, when angels are watching over us. It says his, he gives his angels command. He gives them charge over us. And sometimes we're entertaining angels unaware in our lives. And the Lord is watching over his children. And um, this song just shares that with us today. It's a song of encouragement.
will see of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. sound fantastic thank you so much for leading us and and um, I'm thankful for what God is doing as Starla mentioned just a moment ago uh, about fear uh, one of the verses that came up today uh, in the app if you were using the app and they, they're random but uh, this one was Isaiah 41 verse 10 fear not for I am with you be not dismayed for I am your God. Yes, I will help you. Amen? Amen? I will uphold you with my righteous hand. You know, as we pray together every Sunday that we have the opportunity to, to experience uh, prayer time. Remember, it's never an add-on. It is our service to the Lord, okay? And don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that God gives us the chance to pray. And I just got to tell you, um, again, bragging on you, as Brent gets ready to just help us experience this moment of just this prayer time. But before we do, I, I got to tell you, I've been looking at the, the time that has been invested in prayer. And uh, if I can get this thing quit messing up on my phone here, I want to show you, tell you this. As a church, we know now, I believe we have 31 people who are using the app, okay? That doesn't mean that uh, we have some that are using the book, but I, I don't have a way of, unless you come to me and say, hey, pastor, I'm praying consistently, uh, I won't have a way of knowing that. But in the app, we have sown over 123,000 seeds. 31 people have sown over 123,000. This week, listen, before Monday hit, we hit 100,000. And uh, I was just, I was so excited. So 120 hours of prayer time. 63 days of fasting. 180 people that we're praying for. 180 people are being prayed for. Amen? Isn't that awesome? Hey, listen. Give God the glory this morning. Amen? I'm so proud of you. I'm telling you, it just makes my heart overflow. Knowing that you're praying and, and, uh, and that you're praying for me and John. I talked to him this week and I said, John, this is what the folks are doing. And he got so excited. And he's, he's in Kentucky getting ready to preach. And uh, 
He said, I'll have to put pen and paper to it, but he said, I think that's some of the largest percentages we've ever seen in using the app. So again, to God be the glory, great things he has done. Keep it up. Keep praying. Keep seeking. And you know what? There's going to be times, and as Isaiah, that that passage tells us in the comments below, you know, you may be experiencing some fear in sharing your faith and, and, and being rejected. That, that comes with the territory, amen? It comes with the territory. Remember Jesus said, if they hate you, remember they first hated me. You're in good company. You're in the company of Jesus. But Jesus changed people's lives, amen? He transformed. And, and as, as I had the opportunity this week to, to meet with Jason, and uh, he knew today that this water didn't save him, didn't wash away his sins. He knew today, I'm telling you, that's one of the smartest kids I've ever been around. And what blessed me, I said, give me an example of sin. Of course, his mom wasn't real happy with this. So he was just giving me a, a living example of sin. So I said, give me an example of sin. And he, I had, my office is still packed up, a lot of books that I still don't have on shelves. And he went over and he found this, this bin of books. And it was, a, it was a journal, leather journal. And he took it and he threw it on the ground. And he said, that's like sin. That's, that's like a Bible disrespecting God's word. I said, he understands what sin is. He understands that our sin separates us from God. Amen. And so, folks, listen. If a child can understand those things, you and I can understand what it means to have a relationship with God and what it means to walk in that relationship with God. Amen. Children can teach us so much about ourselves many times. And uh, I was thankful that that was one of the first that we would have baptized right here in this, in this facility. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Why don't you join me here at the altar as we pray together. Father, thank you for the picture of walking in newness of life. The picture of the, the death, the burial, the resurrection. Thank you for what that represents in, in someone's life and how little Jace has gone from death to life, from darkness to light. And God now he understands that he has the Holy Spirit to convict him when he does wrong. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit today. Lord, I'm thankful that we have the opportunity to continue to have this baptistry the rest of the month. And, and God, if there are people even in the sound of my voice today who've never been obedient, they're saved, they're born again, but they've never been obedient in walking through the waters of baptism. Lord, I pray that they would do that. I pray that they would make a public profession today in the days ahead. So, Father, we ask that you would stay close to us for the remainder of our service. God, I thank you for these people and how they're praying and how they're seeking you. God, how they're inviting people, how they're putting people on their prayer list to pray for, specifically. It blesses my heart, God, to see this to experience this. So, Father, stay close to us as we stay close to you. In Jesus' name we pray.
His favor be upon and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May His favor be upon you take your Bibles and turn with me. We'll start off in the book of Acts where we left off last time. I'm just going to highlight the verse that we looked at last time and we're going to finish this message up. If you remember in the book of Acts, Acts 17, uh, we where we started, so once you find your place there, would you please stand in honor of God's Word today? And as we do each time, each week, this is just a way that I affirm the Word of God and ask you to do so with me today. Amen. I believe the Bible is the Word of God. Every word of it is true. I will receive it gladly. For what the Bible says differs from my thinking and practice. With God's help, I'll change. I pray that we will. Look with me here. The last part of verse 6. It says, the officials shouting, these men have turned the world upside down. Have come here too. What the, what, I'm telling you, that is one of the greatest indictments that could be on us today. They have turned this place upside down. It doesn't look the same. These followers, these faith followers of Jesus Christ have been here. And guess what? They've turned this place upside down. It wouldn't it be to the glory of God that people could say that about us. They were saying that about them in Thessalonica. And here we have these men who have come and done the same thing. Preached the gospel. Shared the gospel faithfully. Now turn with me over to Matthew chapter 5. And for the context, we'll look at verses, uh, we're going to look at this, verses 1 through 13. Okay? Mary, I think, there we go, we've got it on the screen there. This is the Sermon on the Mount. This is the greatest sermon that was ever preached. Jesus is talking about kingdom living, how to live the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is kingdom living. And he tells us, he starts off when he saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then what? He began to teach them, saying, of course, we have the Beatitudes. And these are different ways that we are blessed. And again, the word happy and blessed are interchangeable here. Blessed are the poor in spirit. 
because the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is there. Again, this is kingdom living. Blessed are those who mourn because they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle for the, because they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful because they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart because they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers because they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness. Now, this stop right there. How many of you, when you've been persecuted, you're going, praise the Lord, man, bless the Lord. I'm happy right now that somebody's cussing me out for Jesus, right? That's not how we think, but that's what we should feel on the inside. Blessed, happy if someone, for the cause of Christ, the name of Christ, is saying something against you, guess what? We're winning. We should understand we are blessed. He's talking about kingdom living here. Not our kingdom, but his kingdom. Because the kingdom of heaven is theirs, he says at the end of verse 10. Blessed are you who, who they insult and persecute you and falsely say every kind of evil against you because of me. Jesus said, this is because of me. Be glad and rejoice because your reward is greater, great in heaven. For that is how they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now look at verse 13, and that, it's our text for today. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt should lose its taste... How can it be made salty? It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled on by men. Father, thank you for your word today. God, thank you for every song. To God be the glory, to the blessing. Lord, we've just experienced what, what a generation and, and how a generation is going to be affected because of the life now lived in Christ. For little Jace, and God, how that's going to change another generation. God, I thank you for that. God, I thank you for the influence and the impact of his grandparents and his mother. And God, all those who have poured into his life. What a blessing that is. We pray this in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Turning your world upside down is really our thought process. And, and when you think about what Jesus is teaching here in the Sermon on the Mount, he's teaching people how to live. And he goes on and gives very specifics. But he gets to the analogy of the salt. All right? We, we have terms today. Uh, have you ever had anyone say, or this terminology, you are kind of salty today, but it's not used in a very positive way, right? You're kind of salty. That, that, you know, that they're, not, they're not giving you a compliment. Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, the, we have the other expression that is used quite often today. They are the salt of the earth in speaking kindly of someone. Matter of fact, there's people in this room, I would think, they're the salt of the earth. As, as nice as that is, and that's a nice comment, the context of this passage is, is so important to understand that if we're a follower of Jesus Christ, we all are the salt of the earth. That we are the salty church. We should be a salty church. It, it, again, believers are salt and light. Jesus does not waste words when he's teaching here about how we should live as followers. He makes it very clear what the role of the church should be. And it, it's amazing today that we have moved away from teaching the Bible, preaching the Bible. And, and the reality is today, we need salt more than ever. You see, we're going to see what salt does. Look at the statement that Jesus makes. You are the salt of the word, of the earth. I want you to see, first of all, the application of salt. The application of salt. 
it is personal. He says, you. Matter of fact, in the Greek, it, it stands along here, and it, it, it has the intention, you and you alone are the salt of the earth. No one else. Meaning the church is the only ones who can be the salt of the earth. As many of the clubs that we have today, listen, there are a lot of great things. There, there are Kiwana clubs, there are the Lions clubs, and they do all those types of things. They do great things. There's United Way, there's, there's the Salvation Army. All those are good things. But they're not the salt of the earth. Now, what's important is, if there are followers of Jesus Christ who are in those clubs, guess what? They can become the salt of the earth. But the church, the reason God was creating the church was to be his hands and feet, to preach the gospel, to change the culture in which they lived. And so often today, what has happened with our times and is the culture is changing the church more than the church is changing the culture. I know that's not popular. And I know that doesn't get many Facebook likes. And I know I'm not going to get some Instagram emoji. But it's the truth in God's word. Listen, if we're not changing the culture around us, we're not being salt. We're not being salty enough. Now, I have given you... For today, uh, and, and my sweet wife put a lot of care into this. She sat down and she made sure all these little tags are made. And it's got Matthew 5.13 on it, which is the passage today. And I want you to take one of these with you. Every family, or if you're here as an individual, take this home today. Now, I want you to use this. I didn't just, and that's why I bought a nice glass salt shaker. Now, we have Tupperware at our house. And that's the ones we use. We love those Tupperware kind. But I'm going to put even the Tupperware aside. And I'm going to put this on the table. Here's why. I want you to use this salt because every time you think of using this salt, I want you to think about, hey, I am the salt of the earth. Every time you salt that food. And I know, listen, if you like my daddy, I'm going to tell you something. My dad can never figure out our, our Tupperware He's been using it now for several months, maybe even years. And we've told him, oh, Tupperware, it comes out fast. And so my dad, he'll just, you know, just everywhere. That's it goes everywhere. And he, well, that's a lot of salt. Every time. Every time. Daddy, I know you're watching right now. You're at home. I love you. And, uh, and, and we're going to make sure you, this thing, I think, pours out, it pours out more than the Tupperware. Yeah. So this thing really works good. So you got to see this thing works. So every time you use this, listen, I want you to be reminded, you are the salt of the earth. You, as a believer, as a follower of Christ, are the salt of the earth. It's no one else. That's why we, we kind of skim over this when it says you. It is a personal pronoun. You are the salt of the earth. We see the application of salt. It is personal. But not only that, we see the effectiveness of salt. Jesus is speaking specifically about the salt and its effectiveness to the what? He says the earth. Now, in this, in this again, in this language, he's, not talking, he's talking about a system. In, in, in matter of fact, in, the, in first, second John, or... First John, it talks about the, the world. Do not love the world or the things in the world. It is a world system. So in order for the salt to change the world system, it has to be applied. It has to be used. And so every time you, every time you use this salt, I want you to think about, I am the salt of the earth. It's personal. It is the effectiveness of salt. Jesus speaks about how it's effective. But not only is it personal, I want you to see it's purposeful. Notice it's our primary purpose. So how salty are you today? Now, and your husband and wife, you, if you elbow in each other, you go, I know how salty. We're talking about the context of kingdom living. 
How salty are you? When people see you, man, I got a lot of salt up here, by the way. When, when I, I got it all over the Beatitudes right here. And so when I think about salt and I think about the effectiveness of salt and I think about the purpose for salt, salt has a purpose. Notice again what it says in the latter part of that. But you're the salt of the earth. How can salt be made salty? Listen, folks. Salt is salty. It doesn't taste like sugar. It's salt. It's salty for a reason. Amen? And we're going to see why it's, it's salty. It's sal- God gave it a reason. And do and you think it's just a coincidence that Jesus just spoke on this in this, using this as an analogy when he gave the greatest sermon on the earth. No. Jesus doesn't do anything by happenstance or by chance. He does everything with purpose. And he used probably two of the greatest metaphors he could have ever used at that time. Why? Because salt was being depended on so much in that culture. Now today, our culture says, no salt. I don't want no salt. I don't want no salt. I don't want no salt. Salt's bad for you. Salt's bad for you. This is bad for you. This is bad for you. Everything's bad for you. Trust me. We are going to die. And I know I've got all the nurses mad at me right now. Talking about sodium and all that stuff. Listen, I understand certain people have. I'm not getting in a health discussion. But I'm telling you, salt had a purpose. And salt was designed for a specific reason. And Jesus used the metaphor for a specific time of telling them why it was so important because they were completely dependent upon salt at that time. But he says, it has a purpose, but you can also miss your purpose or or you can forget your purpose. Notice what it says. It no longer is good for anything but thrown out and trampled upon. Now, one of the things I did the other day, I took salt, and I wanted to just do a little experiment at home. And so I took some salt, and I poured it in a little Tupperware bowl. And then I took sugar and poured it on top. Then I mixed it together. What do you think I tasted first? I tasted salt first. You think that's a coincidence? No. Salt has a more distinctive flavor than sugar when it's mixed together. When you put salt and sugar together, it's no longer the purpose of what it was designed for. Matter of fact, when we think about preserving, we'll talk about that in just a moment. If you try to put salt on something, you added sugar on top of that, the thing that you were trying to preserve is going to just be preserving and going to stink because you sweetened it up. I got to thinking about that. Is that what we're doing today? We sweeten it up, but it still stinks. We need to get back to pure salt. Amen? We need to get back to the pure word of God being the salt. Amen? We need to get back to preaching that is, un, listen, unadulterated, unapologetic about what, Bi- what the Bible says. Not what I say, but what God's word says. And I know today, in step with the culture that we live in, there are those who say, you are this, you're that. They have all the labels in the world for me. I can assure you of one thing. I am a child of God. That's who I am. You can label me with everything you want to. You can lock me out of Facebook if you want to. But I can assure you, one thing you can't do, you can't take away the value that God put on me as a child of God. Another thing you can't take away from me is I'm salty. And the reason I'm salty is because I've got the Spirit of God in me. You've got it in you. And thank God for the fact that It has a purpose. We must not forget our purpose. You see, we have a testimony. We have influence. A testimony means 
you are put through the test and you still are on your feet. Amen? And when people who, who, who listen, who are decaying, they're dying, they need someone to look at them and say, guess what? I'm dying as well, but I'm dying different than you're dying. You see, you have no hope of dying. I have all the hope in Jesus that when I die, guess what? I'm really not dead. I don't know why we have a hard time talking about people at funerals. We talk about it like they're dead. But they're more alive than we are. They're not dead. They're alive. But we'll talk about them in the past tense. Well, they have been a good person. No, they're a godly person now. Amen. They're complete. They have a perfect body. They don't have to look at their stuff anymore and go, Dear God, what is happening to me? No. No. I know what it's like. Y'all look in the mirror just like I do, and you go, what is going on? They don't have to do that. Isn't it? Yeah, hallelujah. Maxie finally came alive. I knew it wouldn't take much. But it's the testimony. But can I tell you something? God purposed us with a testimony. He purposed us with a testimony. He said, guess what, church? Guess what, kingdom liver, livers? Livers. <laughs> Kingdom living, amen. I've got livers on my mind because I want to put some salt on my livers. Now listen, don't think about eating right now. I know it's going to be difficult because I've got an appointment after this to get me. Well, I can't get no livers, but I'm going to get some fried chicken. But listen to me. Let me get you back. Our testimony is so important that we are purposed in our test, a testimony, you're testifying to what? God is in your life. You're testifying to that truth. You're testifying that he has made you salt. You're not something else. Now, you can become ineffective. Your testimony is no longer the same. The enemy people that I grew up with that started out in the ministry are no longer in the ministry today. Do you know how many people that, that I've watched stand in pulpits and preach the gospel who preached it one day and, and, and yet they're not preaching today? And I'm telling you, listen, but by the grace of God, I could go there too. Trust me. But it breaks my heart to understand there are people who've lost their effectiveness. And guess what? Their testimony is just like the salt being thrown on the ground and trampled upon. It makes no difference at all. And you've got some friends and you've got some family who look at your life and they go, there is no difference in you. There is no, there's no distinction about you. There's no saltiness about you. You've mixed your life with so much sugar, you might as well just throw it on the ground and let people trample on it. That's what Jesus was illustrating here. It has no purpose any longer. It's not only your testimony, it's your influence. Influence is a, is a great power. The power to influence someone. And we have the ability to influence people for the glory of God. So here's some facts about salt. Listen, it preserves against decay. It penetrates and it touch what, whatever it touches. And we'll, we'll understand that in just a moment. It promotes growth. It produces healing. And it produces thirst. But salt in that day, and just like it's still used in this day... And just not as frequently. But people would take their meat and they would preserve it with the salt. If it did not have the salt on it, what would happen? It would decay. It would rot. Is that not the picture of our culture today? It is rotting before our eyes. Listen, the culture, the world we live in, that's why he said you and I are the salt of the earth. We are the ones who, if anyone, it's not going to happen because someone has joined a particular political group. It's not going to happen because we have decided to go to a particular type of church. No, it's going to happen when we become salt of the earth. Salt pervert, preserves against decay. It keeps something from dying. And do you realize the one word that you could speak in someone's life could keep them from dying for eternity? The opportunity that God is putting before us 
right now as we're praying for those people who are on our list, who are guests, who are saying, God, thank you for giving us these people. I have a young man right now who's incarcerated that I believe God's going to give me a face-to-face appointment. I'm praying for that appointment this week. And I'm praying for the opportunity to share the gospel with him. This is the same young man that I looked at and said, hey, God loves you. And he looked at me and said, no one has ever told me that. Not just today, never. Well, I'm hopeful that I have the opportunity this week to speak to him and share the gospel with him. Guess what? Salt is going to change his life. It's in a listen. He's in a decaying process now. Salt penetrates what it touches. Let me give you the illustration. You can take a gallon of water here. And if I had a gallon of water here and I took this salt and I just began to put a little bit of salt in that water, guess what? Instantaneously, that water would change from being one way to another because of the salt that penetrates that water. It changed it. It changed the molecular buildup and the the makeup of that water is no longer what we thought it was. It's changed. And guess what? Salt does the same thing. Our testimony, our influence does the same thing when we have that influence on someone because we are salt we change those around us I heard Adrian tell this story in one of his messages years ago in 1985 in New Orleans Louisiana there was a celebration and he said they were celebrating The park commissioner was celebrating they had gone through an entire summer without one drowning in the city pools. They were so excited about it. There were 200 people there. And they were having a celebration with those 200 people. There were 100 lifeguards on the scene. They were all celebrating. At the end of the celebration, however, there were four lifeguards. And there they looked and at the bottom of the pool. There was a fully dressed man that had drowned amid a hundred lifeguards. Jerome Moody, age 31. Dr. Rogers went on to say, I wonder how many souls are going to hell. Our neighbors are surrounding by people who claim to be salt of the earth. Salt penetrates. It changes things. And dear God, in the midst of our our communities in which we live, the people we walk with every single day, the people that we come in contact with, they're either going to see that we're salt or not. They're either going to see that our testimony is true, it's real, or it's not. They're going to see that, hey, that influence I once had is either there or it's not. Friend, I'm going to tell you something. You cannot hang a tag on your, on your car anymore and say, just follow me to church and people believe you. Matter of fact, you can't wear the t-shirts anymore that says, hey, I love Jesus. They don't care. What they want to see is people who walk it out, they talk it. Why? Because they're the salt of the earth. What they're looking for today is people who've been beat to hell and back, and yet they're still standing. Amen? That's what they're looking for. That's what they're looking for. And some of you in this room have been beat up. You've been back. Listen, you've been bashed. And even by people who call you their friend. But I'll tell you something. You're still standing. Amen? Amen? Aren't you glad you're still standing? Hey, can I tell you, you're standing. Brent, you're standing, son. You're standing, Mark. You're standing here because God has a purpose for you. The purpose is to be salt of the earth. Now, listen, salt promotes growth. I learned this, didn't know this because I'm not a farmer. I'd love to be a farmer. I love to bush hog. I love to cut grass. If you've got grass, I'll come cut it for you. If you've got a tractor, just let me know. I'm coming to cut grass. I'll sit on that tractor all day long. I love that. I got one of these mowers. It's a zero-turn mower. I, I go more circles than I do straight just because I love to. But back in the day, especially in Jesus' day, they would take salt and they would put it into fertile or to the ground. And that salt would actually make that soil more fertile. It promotes growth. Do you realize today that we can actually have such an influence on people's lives that once they become a follower of Jesus Christ, we can produce something inside of them because we have the ability to influence in that way. 
But salt has the same thing. It won't allow you to stay the way that you are. It promotes growth. I believe that's through the function and the unction of the Holy Spirit that we have the ability to grow. It promotes growth. But salt, it produces healing. It produces healing. Aren't you glad that salt heals? Can I get an amen? Listen, some of us in this room have, have gone through a time and you've needed healing and only God can bring it. And guess what? He has brought it at the right time. Amen. He's brought salty people in your life and they know how to sprinkle it on. They just know how to turn it on. They know how to tilt the bottle in the right way. I'm telling you, when you've been beat up, they know how to make it right. It heals. I'll never forget as a, as a teenager, one of the things that I love to do is going to the beach with all my zits and get in that salt water. You know why? Because I'd come out a lot cleaner skin than I went in. Why? Because it begins to heal things. I, I, you think, why would you tell me that? Because I'm going to tell you something. It heals. It heals a scar. It heals a wound. If you go in and you go to a, a place and go to a beach and you've got to, guess what? You get to look at it and say, I'm no longer, it doesn't look gross like it did before I went in. I come out, it looks healed. Why? Because the properties in salt bring healing. Do you think it's by coincidence or accident that people use that today for that specific reason? No. Do you think it's a coincidence or accident that God spoke about what salt does and how, it's, how it heals? No. Do you think it's by coincidence or accident that God used this as a metaphor when speaking about kingdom living? No. Because we are the salt of the earth. And we should be the ones who bring the greatest healing to those who are hurt. Why isn't the church the place where people can be healed? It should be. Amen? It should be a place where healing takes place, where hearts have been broken. I'm telling you, that I, I, it just breaks my heart today to see how many people today are still out of fellowship with God, and it's all because of church hurt. You know what we need? We need some salty people. We need some salty kingdom living people to go and just listen. Rub off on them. You need to start smelling like them. You see, if you're going to have sheep, and you're going to know that you have been with your sheep, you're going to smell like your sheep. Because their smell is going to rub off on you because you've been with them. Same truth. Listen, when you've been with someone who needs a healing, they're hurt, they're, listen, they're crying out for that. Sometimes it, it takes us getting into the trenches with those people. It takes them getting in into the hardest places. Listen, it looks ugly. It's, listen, it's like somebody took, pulled the scab right off of it. And I'm telling you, their scab's been pulled off all around us. And we're bleeding. We're bleeding. We're bleeding. And we're desperate in need of salty Christians, kingdom living people who are in Christ Jesus who can help bring healing. Amen. Salt produces thirst. Whoo! It does. I'm getting thirsty right now. Just this salt being in front of me. Because this jumped off this table, I think, into my mouth. It brings thirst. Salt produces thirst. Matter of fact, Jesus said this. Anyone who drinks from the, this water will what? Get thirsty. But whoever drinks from the water that I give will never thirst again. Ever, in fact, water I give you will become a well, a water spring, springing up within him for eternal life. Can I tell you something? When you start sharing the gospel, you make people thirsty for Jesus. You create a thirst that they didn't have before. You say, well, pastor, I don't know how to do that. Friend, quit trying to figure out how to do it and just do something. <laughs> just be salty, Amen. Just be salty. Being salty is enough. I don't think you need another Romans Road, a CWT, uh, whatever these programs are. They're all good to the glory of God. But I'm telling you, we've gotten so caught up in programs, we've forgotten what it means to be salt. 
and my computer forgot what it means to stand up. Listen, salt produces thirst. And the only way that people are going to thirst for him is if we're salty in the right way. Let me leave with this as we close. I want you to take your notes because years ago, I'm not even sure where I got this. I've had it written in my Bible for some time. I'm sure I heard it from one of my pastor friends, but I've had it written in my, in my Bible for a long time. I took the word salt, or th- they had taken the word salt and, and written it out. And beside each letter, here it is. See people the way Jesus sees people. Matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, what did it say? When he saw the multitudes, he was moved from compassion because they were scattered like sheep having no shepherd. You see, folks, if we're going to be salty, we've got to see people the way Jesus sees people. They're lost. You need to quit looking at people as successful. You need to quit looking at people as poor. You need to quit looking at people as one way, as black or white or Hispanic or Indian, whatever you may do. You need to quit looking at people that way and start looking at people the way Jesus looks at people. They are lost without him. They're like sheep scattered without a shepherd. And that is the, that is, listen, that is a place of vulnerability. That's a place that destruction can take place. But accept people the way Jesus accepts people. The years for years we sang the song, Come Just As You Are. Listen, Jesus didn't say clean it up. No. We're to accept people just as they are. God cleans them. Amen. You've heard me say it. It's worth saying again. If we're the fishermen of men, if we catch them, God will clean them. Amen. It's not our job to clean people. It's God's job. So we have to accept people the way they are, the way Jesus does. Love people the way Jesus loves people. The Bible says, again, he was moved with compassion. He had compassion for them. He loved people. He didn't love them because of what they could give to him. He loved them because of what they needed from him. They needed life. They needed hope. And then touch people the way that Jesus touched his people. You see, Jesus comes in at the darkest hours. Jesus comes in when everyone else has walked out. And what we need to do is to be salt, to be salt of the earth. We need to walk in when everyone else has walked out. Touch people the way Jesus touches people. Would you pray with me? As their heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Thank you today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the prayer that you continue to invest in that time in your life. As Brent prepares us for our time of invitation, I want you to understand something today. Know this. You can't... You either are salt or you're not. You may not have an influence or a testimony because you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Friend, if you're watching online today and you've never trusted Him as your Savior, you're not salt. You can't be salt. My daddy was one of the kind, listen, people called my daddy the salt of the earth that knew him, that know my dad. But my dad, at 53 years old, he gave his life to Jesus. That's when he became the salt of the earth. You see, we have to get back to what the Bible teaches. We need to get back to what Jesus truly said. So if you're here today and you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus, listen, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about do you know him? Friend, listen, you will leave this place today if you do not know him and you will split hell wide open. But 
God has made it possible for you to trust in Him. Again, you may be watching online. That's you. Right now, I'm going to give you an opportunity, just like I give each week people an opportunity to put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. If you're in this room today and you've never done that, then I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that today. I'm going to pray a prayer, and I want you to understand that I'm not praying, it's you praying. I'm just leading you, just like someone did me. I'm not praying, I'm leading you so you can pray to God. So you can tell God today that you're sorry for your sin. So let me lead you right now, something like this. Dear Jesus, today I realize I'm a sinner. And I cannot save myself. Today I believe by faith that you died on the cross. And three days later you came up out of the grave as payment for my sin. Jesus, I turn from my sin right now. I repent. And I turn to you. And I ask you to save me right now. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer and saving me today. If you just prayed that prayer with me online, would you let us know? Put it in the, in the comments or would you give us a private message? We'd love to know that. We'd love to put a Bible in your hand. We'd love for someone to reach out to you, to talk to you about what it means to walk in fellowship with God. If you're in this room today and say, Pastor Russ, that's me, I prayed with you. Would you just look at me? Anyone at all? Just look at me. In just a moment, we're going to have what we call our invitation. This altar is open. As they lead us, we stand our feet. Even right now, let's stand our feet. You come as they lead us right now. Amen. May we be salty as we leave here today. And every time you're at home, I just want you to remind yourself, hey, Matthew 5, 13, you are the salt of the earth. Not someone else. You are. Amen. Not the, not the listen, not the club that we joined. Nope. We can make the club better. But it's the church. The church is distinctive in its call to be the salt of the earth. Folks, we've got to get back to what the Bible teaches about His Word. It tells us we're the salt of the earth. Amen. Pick yours up on the way out. Hey, if you have a gift today, put it in the basket on the way out. I can't tell you again, thank you for being so faithful. And um, we've got some great things that are happening. And you're about to see an awning that we're going to be able to put out on the, on the front door when it rains. And we can help mamas with babies and, and people get in that out of the rain quicker. Amen. Guess what? God provided that through someone who said, Pastor Russ, go buy it. Go buy it. So we, hey, to God, I called Doug. Doug was like, send me a picture, show me what it looks like. He sent me a thumbs up. Yesterday said, hey, that thing looks good. So it's, it's going to be about 12 foot wide and about 9 foot long. Amen. And uh, so uh, just, a, just another way and uh, that we're trying to uh, do some things here. We're starting to grab some, listen, some traction. We're, it's like building blocks. 
We're putting the foundation in place. We got some really amazing things that are taking place for children. We're preparing. Listen, we're preparing to take care. This is why it's called North Star Family Church. Amen. We believe in the family. We believe in mom and dad. Scott, you you are the chief discipler of your family. You know why? Because you're the salt of the earth. You know why? Because you have that opportunity to teach those children. My role is to teach you. Your role is to teach them. Amen? And we're going to help you. We're going to equip you to do that. And I thank God the conversations that I've had, Miss Star and I've had over the last week or so. And I can't wait next week to tell you even more about it, okay? And what we're preparing for that. And, and can I tell you, some of you are going to get a call. You're not going to be voluntold. But I tell you what, you're going to get an opportunity to be salt of the earth. Amen? How many, how many of these kids might come in here? And how many of these families might come here? They've never been. I know one family I've been praying for. They have 13 kids. Would have high attendance death. They just show up. That is my neighbor. It's great. I hope. I'm praying. I'm praying. They've said they're going to come. I'm praying they'll come. Amen. Miss Starla, you got anything else for us? Yes, Wednesday night, we start. Is she on? Hang on. You got muted. Hang on. Okay, okay. there we go. Yes. Wednesday night, we start uh, choir. Now, we, we had an ensemble, but I think we're moving toward choir. So if you would like to be a part, if you have the gift of song, if you love to worship, meet here at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night, and we'll begin to work on some things for revival and then moving toward Christmas, Lord willing. We'll get to do Christmas this year, and the Lord will keep us safe, and we'll, we'll stay safe from COVID. Um, so 7 o'clock, Wednesday night. I don't know. You, 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 well, that's good. Hey, listen, I hadn't told you lately. I love you, and uh, God be with you. Just be soft. Amen? Lead us out. Sing this with us. Praise the Lord.